Okay, so this is going to be a quick one about what I think is perhaps the most important thing to practice for Gypsy Jazz right hand single note technique. And I would say it's what we call triplet picking. So um, I'll do a bit of background on this. Um, in his book, Getting Into Gypsy Jazz Guitar, Stefan Rembel lays out the rules for Gypsy Jazz picking um, in quite some detail. And two points that are pertinent to us today is the fact that you've got to start every new string with a downstroke, that one's well known. But what is less well known is that you should also end phrases with the downstroke as well. So in practice, that kind of means that you're kind of using downstrokes an awful lot, and upstrokes are almost kind of the exception to the rule. In fact, if you just played using downstrokes all the time, that would be a nearer approximation to what gypsy jazz right hand is than alternate picking, okay? <laughs> So anyway, so I mean, um, in another video, uh, which was, sorry, in a video that's put out recently by Troy Grady on his channel, um, uh, Masters in Mechanics or whatever it's called, I can't remember exactly, he talks to gypsy jazz guitarist called Joska Stefan, who is um, uh, sort of videoed in some detail, and it's really interesting if you look at his uh, right hand. And what he talks about there is the fact that a lot of the phrasing in gypsy jazz is based on what, what's called triplet picking. Now, this is, uh, he's, in his opinion, it's actually better to think about it that way than to think about these rules about starting each new string on a downstroke. And actually, if you watch his playing at speed, it gets to the point where he's cheating up strokes on arpeggios, and I've seen a lot of gypsy jazz guitarists do that. Also, an interesting thing is uh, Django also did start phrases. We have video or um, film evidence of him starting phrases on upstrokes as well. So, the sort of traditional rules of gypsy jazz picking are not necessarily as watertight as you'd think. But the big thing is the phrasing, and um, obviously uh, this is a big part of it. So let me just sort of show you how you might think about this. Um, one very simple uh, practice exercise I get my students to do is to pick one note of string to start off with. So you see that's pretty easy going down. A little bit trickier coming up. And you're meant to do this to a metronome. tension in your arm and so on and so forth, correct positioning of the pick, starting uh, make sure you've got a bit of space under the wrist, make sure that each note is a rest stroke and so on and so forth. Okay, the next stage is to do in, incorporate the upstroke and do two notes of string. Excuse me, <laughs> let's try that again. Now I actually find it's pretty easy. In, in actual practice, in actual fact, this is probably one of the easiest combinations for the right hand because if I I can just uh, alternate pick all the way down, you know. So for example, um, a lot of guitarists like Angelo de Bar and people like that, they use combinations of uh, fingerings that would, that would give you two notes of string on descent. So for example, for example, is that that would be sorry, that's how it's meant to sound. That's a descending version of a of a minor 6 arpeggio, in this case B minor 6 arpeggio, which would be kind of awkward to do, so you've got to go down, up, down, up, down, down, up, and you can do it. It's alright, that kind of speed, but it can be a little bit sloppy, and I know it's for like the fast tempos and the, the, the fast runs that um, people like Angelo play, then a lot of these runs become two-note string things, so it's dead simple. This is quite a known thing, by the way, and Django did it back in the day as well. Um, so that's an easy combination. Now the next combination, three notes of string. It's the same going up and down. The only difference is that going downwards, I mean towards the floor, so it's downwards spatially, downwards across the strings. And what happens is you have a little rake across those, rake, rake, so it's down, up, rake. It's kind of down, up, down, rake, up, down, rake, up, down, rake, up, down, right across the strings. Now coming back up, obviously you don't do the rake. And that, I would say, is the combination that you need to practice more than anything else. And this comes up all over the place. So obviously if I'm playing a combination of no, um, uh, fingering or a scale or something, that's three notes of string. I'd have to do that. And 
that's quite awkward, quite hard to do. Your, your, your arm will feel some tension, at least at first, and it's your job to try and minimise that tension and just get used to making that movement. Okay? So, um, ways you can do that, obviously you can play the open strings. And then eventually, um, this is a pattern that I saw Joska Stefan using. It's quite tricky. So, right. So, this is a chromatic pattern. Third finger, second finger, first finger, next string. Going down across that, and you can jump strings. Okay, so that's, that's a good way to warm that up. See, I messed that up. Okay, that's quite an awkward thing to practice, and I think that will that will prepare you for the most difficult things that your right hand is like to come across. Even combinations, uh, or even numbers of notes of string, fine. Uh, one note of string, funnily enough, not too bad. I don't really have too much trouble with that. And like I say, you know, when you get past you might, you might just kind of, you know, cheat it a bit anyway. I've even seen people do things like this. You know, sorry. You know, down, down speed. You know, that, that does happen. People do that if they need to. So um, it's, it's perhaps a little, a little less purist than people say. Anyway, so I wanted to give you a musical example where this is useful. And the reason why we do this, obviously we can use it for triplets, dabadi 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 dabadi. But where it becomes quite interesting is where we use it against the beat. So for example, we, we play um, this down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, picking pattern, but we do it in eighth notes. So for example, one, da 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 See, that's got a kind of funky feeling. That's kind of like, um, you know, a classic uh, sort of jazz cross rhythm. Um, so, you know, that's something worth thinking about. And the other thing that's quite interesting is um, the more subtle uh, effects of this. So, for example, there's a, there's a riff at the beginning of Bistrofada by um, uh, Stefan Hollenberg, which is... Uh, and then we go... Um, so we play this run. Now what is my right hand doing there? It is going down, up, down, down, up, down, Okay? So... Now if I alternate picked it... That would be less interesting, I think, then. I mean, you could go. But again, you know, the reason why, why do we use this fingering? I'm pretty sure this is the fingering that Stefan Lambert uses. As opposed to. I think it's because of the phrasing. It makes it more interesting. So, this is something which I'm going to um, explore in my own playing. Another example might be if we go. Job of that. Let me try and slow it down a bit. It's very hard. So you've got to go down straight. Down, up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up. Good thing to practice. I need to work on that clearly. So again, you know, it's like it's quite important thing to to be able to play consecutive down strokes. Da 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 da. There's a lot of that, and it kind of contributes to the the sound and phrasing of this music. Um, obviously, in the history, there have been players who use entirely downstrokes, or almost entirely downstrokes, like Charlie Christian and um, Wes Montgomery. So it's not just uh, Billy Bauer, who played with Lenny Tristano. So it's not just people who um, you know play gypsy jazz. There are other types of players who use just purely downstrokes as well. And it's something about the weight of the downstroke. But obviously, there's a limit to how fast you can play when you do that kind of stuff. Mike Marino is an example of a contemporary jazz guitarist who uses primarily downstrokes in his kind of medium speed playing. Anyway, I hope that's of interest and helpful um, and might give you something to uh, target your practicing towards technically because I think that's a really big thing. I know 
um, I, I need to work on it myself. So this is kind of something that I'm kind of taking from my own practice schedule. Um, and obviously I teach it to my students. And I think this is something that a player at any level could profitably work on, whether you're a beginner or whether you're a seasoned, um, experienced player. I still feel this is something which can't be overlooked. I think it's the single hardest movement in gypsy jazz and therefore the thing that needs um, the most attention. Anyway, I hope you find it useful and uh, happy practicing. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.